many advances America is justly proud of are the forward strides of her medical profession. Great hospitals dot her cities, where delicate and undreamed of operations are successfully performed daily. Research laboratories seek the prevention of disease. Nurses and medical students are trained for the fight against discomfort and suffering. And today, we find Chester A. Riley facing a grim situation with his usual calm stoicism. <coughs> Gillis! I'm choking! Gillis! Gillis, get me a tent! I need oxygen! Gillis! <laughs> Stop yelling! I told you a hundred times not to put those rivets in your mouth. Oh, hold still. Oh, it's dark in there. I can't see nothing. Quiet, quiet. What's going on here? It's a very interesting case, Hawkins. Ryle here swallowed a rivet. Now, the way I diagnose it, we got two methods. Pull it out or drive it home. Well, those rivets cost money. Now, you men stop fooling around with them. Get them up to Doc Fisher. That's a good idea. Come on, Ryle. I'll take it. There we are. Tiny little fishbone, large in the epiglottis. And you sounded like you swallowed the whole fish, fins and all. Can you imagine? I eat a salmon and he stabs me. Uh, uh, thanks, Doc. I'll see you around. Oh, just a moment, please. What's the matter? Open your mouth again and say, ah. What for? Is there another one swimming upstream? Ah. Please. Ah. That's all right. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's all right. You can shut your mouth now. Ah, I'm okay, uh, Doc. You will be as soon as they're removed. What's removed? You, you can't see my appendix from way up there. You have enlarged and inflamed tonsils. It ought to come out. What for? I, I've had them all my life. They're attached to me. In their condition, immediate and serious complications can develop. I've had him all my life. He's had him all his life. Tonsils can be a contributing factor in rheumatic endocarditis. Septicemia. You're a sick man, Ryan. You've got the book. I would say an immediate operation is necessary. Hop, hop, operation. Well, there's no cause for alarm. A tonsillectomy is as simple as your ABCs. Well, I had a lot of trouble with them in the second grade. <laughs> with the husband. Well, let's say in about a year, huh, Doc? I'll arrange it for tomorrow. Come on, Ryle, you're all through. Uh... <laughs> Get me to cottage hospital, please. You can do it now, Doc. He's passed out. Come on. Junior! Gee, Pop, I didn't know you were there. Never mind, Junior. Just stand there for a minute like you are. What for? I want to get a picture of you in my mind, playing innocently on the front stoop. What's wrong, Pop? Something the matter with your leg? No, Junior, my trouble is further north than that. <laughs> September Simeon. Holy smoke! Is it dangerous? Junior, your father is facing the Grim Reaper. No fool! You better go in the house, Pop. Where's your mother? In the kitchen with Babs. You gotta break it to her gently. Any sudden shock might lay her out flat. You gotta lead up to it little by little. Okay, Pop. I'm with you. Thanks, son. I knew I could depend on you. Let's go in now. You can help me just a little. Sure, Pop. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Mr. Parker must be proud as a peacock. <laughs> Mamie said he was expecting a boy. And instead, he got two. Twins. <laughs> Get me a pad for the shelf, dear. Oh, sure. Oh, here comes Daddy, and he's walking with a cane. Oh, I hope he hasn't turned his ankle again. Oh, Riley. 
Well, what's wrong? Did you hurt yourself, Daddy? Here, sit down. It's nothing. Don't bother about me. Well, what is it, dear? I can see by your face that there's something wrong. Here's a pillow, Tom. Thanks, Junior. You want to put on your slippers? Well, if you want to, Junior, I don't think they'll fit you. Oh, stop this foolishness, dear, and tell me what's the matter. Sit down, babes. You too, Peg. I want to see you as I'll always remember you. Working your fingers to the bone. Best family a man ever had. All right, Riley, let's have it. I saw Doc Fisher today. You saw the doctor? What about? Be brave, Peg. Take this standing up like the pioneer I know you are. Daddy, what is it? Riley, what's the matter with you? Tonsils. The doc says I gotta have them both out at the same time. Oh, oh Riley. That's a yell, Go oh, on, laugh. I'm the one that's got to go through the torture. Don't be a baby. Tonsillectomy today is practically nothing. Golly, I thought you were stricken with something terrible. <laughs> I thought he was going to kick the bucket. Keep going. It's a big joke. I'm glad my tonsils tickle everybody. <laughs> Sorry, dear, but there's nothing really to get excited about. Nothing to get excited about, she says. All they're going to do is rip my throat from ear to ear and tear out my tonsils. They don't cut your throat, Daddy. They just snip them out through your mouth. Kid at school had them browned out. <laughs> Nobody's shoving a blowtorch down my throat. We'll go to the hospital tomorrow. Now be sensible, dear. I'll go with you. If they have to go, they have to go. Yeah, but I don't want to go with them. You're a brave man. You're no coward. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Babs. I ain't yellow. I can go through with it. <laughs> well, that's the spirit, dear. Oh, boy, Pop. Sure. It's a simple operation. The doctor explained it to me. There's nothing to it. All they do is take a big pair of shears about that long, and then they shove them down your throat. And then they chop and chop. It's almost finished, Gillis. My last will and testament. I, Chester A. Riley, being of sound mind. No good, Ryle. You can get ten years for perjury. I gotta see that Peg and the kids are taken care of. Stop worrying, will you? They go on relief. Why don't you go up the street and see Mrs. Parker? I never met her. What's the difference? She had her tonsils taken out last year. She can tell you the ropes and give you some courage, you know. Chester A. Riley don't need to go to no helpless woman for courage. Uh, but I'll drop in on her after supper just to be neighborly. <laughs> Well, no, I, I'm Chester A. Riley. I live down the street. I'd like to speak to your mother about the hospital. Oh, just a minute. Riley. Who was it, Amy? Junior and Dad's Riley, Father. He wants to see you about the twins, I think. Well, why didn't you let him in? Peg Riley must be expecting another. Mm -hmm. You go and finish the formula, darling. Okay. Oh. Good evening. Oh, hello, Mrs. Parker. I... I don't know how to say this, but I'd like your advice about something. Oh, certainly, Mr. Riley. Won't you come in? Oh, no, no thanks. I, I, I can take it better in the fresh air. Of course, Mr. Riley. I realize the strain you're under. But you must understand, it's your wife's problem, too. Yes, I know. That's what worries me. Why couldn't this thing have happened when I was single? Single? Yeah, then I'd be the only one that would have to suffer. Riley. You must remember that it's perfectly normal. It happens every day. Just look at me. I had two of them. Doesn't everybody have two of them? 
not usually. Oh, you should have seen the joy in Mr. Parker's eyes when I brought them home from the hospital. You brought them home? <laughs> but hardly leave them there. And you know, sometimes Mr. Parker and I could hardly tell one from another. <laughs> Why do you keep looking at them? Will you come on in? I'll let you hold one. You're my bare hands. I think you'll have to use both hands. They each weigh seven pounds. <laughs> and you know, Mr. Wright, they just eat like little piggies. They eat? Naturally. Mrs. Parker, your tonsils should be on television. <laughs> I lost my tonsils last year, Mr. Riley. I just had twins. Twins? Tonsils? <laughs> oh, no. Mr. Riley. <laughs> Little thing like twins. She's laughing at my tonsils. <laughs> Chester A. Riley's last will and testament. Oh, stop it, Riley. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> You're not going to die, Daddy. They only cut your throat a little. <laughs> Kindly let me go on. Being of sound mind, accepting tonsils, do hereby to wit and ergo leave to my beloved wife, Peg, better known as Dumplin', my entire bank account including to wit 15 bucks, which you will find in the radio behind the little tube on the side. So that's why we couldn't get KGEB. Don't interrupt, Junior. To my son and pal, Junior, I leave my good name. He's already got it. Well, I've had enough of this nonsense. We're late already. Dr. Fisher will be waiting. Just a minute, Peg. Let him wait. You haven't heard, but I left Babs. To my darling Babs, who won't have a father to guide her when she goes out with boys, I leave my air rifle and these two words. Watch out. <laughs> Signed, sealed, and delivered, Chester A. Riley. Those are my last words. Well, I should hope so. Come on, get out of the car. Wait. Don't move. Let me take one last look at my darling family. Oh, for heaven's sake. Seeing you all together like this brings a big lump in my throat. That's your tonsils, Riley. Come on, we'll get them out. Nurse! Mr. Riley. You better feel my pulses again. I just took your pulse. Oh, no wonder it's gone. You're perfectly normal. Well, that ain't what everybody else says. They have a point. Now, give me your arm. What for? I'm going to give you a sedative to quiet you. I don't need no quiet. No, but the hospital does. Give me your arm. You want to stick that sword into me? It won't hurt. Just turn your head away. <laughs> oh, you're killing me! I just swabbed your arm with alcohol. I ain't used to it. I don't drink. You won't feel it. Just close your eyes. All right, get it over with. The suspense is awful. Oh! Stop yelling. It's all over. It's funny, it ain't bleeding. Now just try and relax. How can I relax with nobody with me? Where's my late wife? She's in the waiting room. She'll be with you as soon as you get back from the operating theater. Get her? You mean they're going to sell tickets to see me? It's a term for surgery. I'll be back with an order. With your anesthetic. Bring me something to put me to sleep, too. <laughs> Here you all the way down on Maple Street. 
What's the idea coming through the window? Honey beers with Peg. She don't know I knocked off work today. What'd you knock off for? Could I ribbit with my best pal facing the great beyond? Huh? You think I'm gonna die? You got a chance, Ryle. They're betting even money on you at the plant. <laughs> oh, how do you feel, dear? They just gave me something to kill my nerves. What are you doing here? Don't tell me you took the day off. Now, don't throw anything. This hospital equipment's expensive. Can I have your tonsils, Pop? Hush, Junior. Poor Daddy. They're no good to him. And Sparky Evans will trade his stuffed frog for him. <laughs> Junior, you're upsetting your father. Now go back to the waiting room. I didn't mean to. So long, Pop. Good luck. Thanks, Junior. Oh, oops, let's watch where we're going, little man. Excuse me. Well, I see my patient is still hale and hearty. How long will it take, doctor? Oh, five minutes. Snip, snip, and it's all over. Uh, I don't want no expensive funeral, thank you. Just something simple. <laughs> I see we still have our sense of humor. Oh, hello, Gillis. Why don't you have yours out at the same time as Riley? <laughs> the doc's always clowning and kidding. Is there something wrong with his tonsils? Why, they're worse than Riley's. I told him so last week when he came to see me with a sore throat. <laughs> So long, Ryle. Be seeing you. Come back here, you weasel. I'll get him if I have to chase him to Glendale. <laughs> Don't go to Glendale, Tillis. <laughs> Why do you think I'll have to strap him in the chair? Nurse's intuition. A simple tonsillectomy, and you'd think he was facing brain surgery. Gillis can do it, I can do it. Throw him in the chair, sit on him. No! Let go of me! Take it easy. All right, let go of me! Calm down, Mr. Riley. I ain't going. I changed my mind. Why didn't you give him a sedative? He's had everything but raw opium. Give him a sedative and let go. Yes. I ain't going to have no airplane. <laughs> no, you don't. You're repeating yourself. Look, Mr. Riley, this is a simple little piece of cotton. On it are a couple of drops of alcohol. I've nothing up my sleeves, no string, no wires attached. I will rub gently with this soft piece of cotton. So, <laughs> there was no reaction, no pain, no discomfort. It burned a little. <laughs> Grab Sleepy. That's right. Close your eyes. Sleepy. Oh, Miss Drayton, didn't they notify you in time? About what, Dr. Fisher? An emergency just came in from the plant. I'll have to postpone his tonsillectomy. But he's had his anesthetic, Doctor. It can't be helped. I'll get to him later. Take him back to his room. <laughs> I wasn't happy in the psychopathic ward. I had to get transferred to surgery. <laughs> the magazine doesn't make any sense. Get another one. I'm going to go out in the hall and watch for Pop. No, you're not allowed to wander around. No, I can't read Farm Journal of 1943. Junior, come back here. <coughs> Mom, Junior's gone. Never mind, dear. They'll send him back can't help worrying about your father. He's such a baby about hospitals. Oh, it's all right, Mom. Business don't do anything serious. Remember when he had an ingrown toenail and wanted a specialist from Vienna? <laughs> Pop may yell about everything, but he always comes through. We must all be very sweet and considerate when we take him home. Oh, we will, Mom. Pop's all through. They're wheeling him back to his room. Oh, can we go in and see him? Oh, wait a few seconds until they get him settled. 
Now remember, whatever you think about it, this has been an ordeal for your father. So don't treat it lightly and... Junior, be careful what you say. I will, Mom. We must all make a big fuss over him. Oh, sure, Mom, we will. Poor darling. He's probably a mass of nerves. <laughs> Just the same as he is at home. He's sleeping. Some observation. There ought to be a nurse here after an operation. Maybe the dope isn't all finished. Junior, what did I tell you? I meant the anesthetic. <laughs> Look, Mommy's opening his eyes. I must be in heaven. I can see my wife and children. Now you're in your own room, dear. We're right here with you. The operation is all over. How are you feeling, Daddy? Awful. My throat is killing me. Oh. Did it hurt much, Pop? It was agony, but I took it. You were under an anesthetic, Daddy. It didn't make no difference. I dreamt I was having my tonsils taken out. <laughs> what a dear. No, I couldn't. Nothing could pass my throat. Well, just try. Go ahead, Pop. I know you're brave. I'll try it for you, son. Oh! Did it hurt, Daddy? Not much. It was just excruciating. Well, sounds better. Not quite so hoarse. Try another sip, dear. It's doing you good, Pop. Take some more. <laughs> Hey, that didn't hurt at all. And your voice is natural. Yeah. And I feel better, too. Oh, that modern surgery is wonderful. Oh, I'm glad you came through it so well, dear. Well, I'll ask the nurse when we can take you home. No, don't ask her nothing. All she knows is to hemstitch with a needle. <laughs> See that? She's got her sewing basket with her. Oh, he says he feels very well. I feel great. I'm ready to go home right now. Oh, fine. Orderly. What's the matter? What's that for? I don't need no wheelchair to take me to my car. Oh, you're not going to your car. You're going to the operating room. Operating? Operating room? What? I thought the operation was all over. Believe me, Mrs. Riley, it would be my dearest wish. You mean I was up there and the doc didn't, and you, and you're gonna. Oh. Daddy! Daddy! He failed again! That's the first break I've had today. Thank you, You see, dear, the operation didn't hurt as much as you expected, now did it? Well, that's because I'm the kind of a man who can take it. Oh, I know, dear. You were as brave as a lion. Um, Peg. Yes, dear. I, uh, I was only kidding about that 15 bucks. There really ain't no dough in that radio. <laughs> uh, there isn't now. It'll go towards paying your hospital bill. Oh, my throat. Oh, my darling, Riley. Fifteen dollars can't hurt that much. Here's your ice cream, Daddy. It'll taste nice and cool. Thanks, Babs. Hey, Pop! Hey, look! There's an ambulance parked in front of Mr. Gillis's house. They got the wrong house. They're coming back for me. No, they're not. It's Mr. Gillis. What? Hey, cut it out. Let me go, will you? I want to keep my tonsils. You got yours, I want mine. Uh, can you imagine that dope Gillis making such a fuss over a little thing like losing his tonsils? Uh. Well, you must remember, dear, everyone isn't as stoic you are. That's right, Peg, you married a Tarzan. <laughs> oh, my throat. Oh, my God. Oh, brother. Thank <laughs> you.